this disease happened for David at the most productive time in his life. His work worked on many levels, highly crafted, beautifully drafted, um, and always about a story from his own intellect. There was always layers and layers and layers. The work was deep and layered and kind of beautiful but mysterious at the same time. And then as he, you know, really progressed as an artist way before anything happened, um, the work just became better and better and better. He was entering his prime. He could get along with anybody and introduce a conversation about anything. He was very exciting and a terrific mate for me. I started to notice though that there would be these social lapses of appropriateness. Someone would make a joke and he wouldn't necessarily follow along with it, but he would jump in with something that was a little off color. He's now more childlike, um, more simplified. He, he wants to be able to talk about things, but he can't. That's a UFO. <laughs> I just now noticed you used metallic paint on this. No, that's an alien, look. Oh, it's not See? an alien. Yeah, that's an alien. <laughs> because of my brain, I'm another thing now. Payaso, the Spanish clown. <laughs> that's what I am. That's a UFO, too. <laughs> All right, you're not being very helpful today. Really? Yeah. What am I being? Payaso. You're not even trying to explain. I'm being payaso? Yeah, you're not even trying I'm not to explain to be payaso. things. His personality was changing. Because my brain is bad. <laughs> That's why I'm payaso. All right, all right. He became more difficult to work with. Because my brain is bad. And we, of course, didn't know why. We just thought. You know, is he not listening? Does he not want to hear what I'm saying? But I do feel like in the early stages, he was just trying to get a connection, get the words to mean what they meant, what they were supposed to mean. Hey, sweetie. You remember this place, right? What? You remember this place, right? Yeah. What is it? What's that? That's here. No, that's what? the San Francisco Art Institute. That's where you went to school. The key moment for me was when he came in to the bedroom with a pair of shoelaces and said, what are these called? And, you know, this is one of those things where you really feel like your stomach hit the, hits the floor. Diana came to visit and she was mentioning some things that she was noticing about him as far as being forgetful. And then Linda and I kind of looked at one another and told him what we had begun to see. I just stopped and said, you're getting an MRI. He had turned 53 in January. On September 26, we got the diagnosis. The neurologist showed us the picture and before anything came out of his mouth, I knew that something was wrong. The brain scan wouldn't look like that. They let me know that, you know, the left brain is bad, and that's where the words are, right there, right there. The frontal lobe and the temporal lobe on the left side of his brain primarily are dying. It's not too scary. Well, it is a little bit scary. Eventually, he will begin to lose balance. He will begin to be unable to care for himself. I used to do really well. Because I used to teach, and I could remember talking, 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 talking. But I can't do it now. <laughs> he, he can't. He can't communicate like he used to on, in a painting or from his mouth. As he's changed, the work has changed. He just absolutely cannot go back to a time where the work had layers and layers and layers. 
2007. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Seven. And Beth and I both feel like that is a direct result of the flattening out of his personality, the inability to access words. There's just not the dimension to him or his work anymore. But there's still bright moments. I mean, the other day he walked by and kissed me on the top of my head. You know, he wasn't like that before. So there is actually a sweetness in his case that is childlike and beautiful. When I ride my car, I always say, God, fix my brain. God, fix my brain. <laughs> to lose his creative mind it's bad. <laughs> because of this disease is a tragedy. It's, it's hard to explain because, you know, we, we've lost that part of him. It's disappearing, it's gone. It's heart-wrenching, a lot of grief for the loss of who he was and how he was being cheated. Because the future is going to be very short and it's not going to be very easy. One of the reasons I've been more forthcoming and frank about our experience um, is the realization that people have to know what something is and they have to feel a personal connection to it in order to support any change happening, um, especially when it's something that's massive and requires research funding at the federal level. We should care about this disease because I do believe the brain is the final frontier. It can be fixed with more research. It hasn't had the attention it should and it is time to put all our efforts, all our government money into research to fix this center of our universe.